Today I'd like to introduce stone tool making. The only tools we have recovered from early hominin fossil sites were made from stone. Tools made out of wood or other organic remains have not been preserved. However, it is likely that tools made out of wood and other organic remains such as cane predate the stone tools that we do find. So finding stone tools does not actually represent the earliest tool use. The first stone tools were very simple. The goal of the hominin makers was to make sharp edges. The earliest stone tools yet found date to 3.3 million years ago in Eastern Africa, and they are not associated with any fossil remains. These tools appear to have been made by pounding techniques which is similar to the way in which some modern chimpanzees and some monkeys use stones as tools. A pounding technique requires you to use two hands to hold the stone core or hammer stone. Modern and historic primates who use stone tools use a core or hammer, that is the stone that is the tool for pounding, and an anvil a stone or even wood upon which the nut or item to be pounded rests. For example, capuchin monkeys in Brazil left these two stone hammers on top of a stone anvil. You can see that the anvil is pitted from long-term nut cracking activity. Excavations reveal that chimpanzees have been using stone tools to crack open nuts for at least 4,300 years in the rainforest of the Ivory Coast in Africa. Now it's not always easy to find rocks in the rainforest. So the chimpanzees transport rocks and leave them at good recognizable locations to which they return for processing nuts. Independently, long-tailed macaques on islands in Thailand also use stones, but they use them to crack open shellfish. Also independently, capuchin monkeys in South America learn to use stones to crack open nuts. Damage and use wear on the primate stone tools help identify their use by the primates as tools. <clears throat> so the arrows point to areas of wear and also pitting that result from use of these stones as tools. Likewise, damage and use wear on stone tools helped us identify the earliest known hominin stone tool use in Eastern Africa at the Lomekwe III site. Here, the hominins also used two hands to hold a core in order to hit it against an anvil. This shows you the two-handed holding of the core just prior to striking it against an anvil to remove flakes. We call these Lomekwean tools. The goal appears to have been to create sharp edges on the core and to produce sharp edged flakes that detach from the core. This picture shows you three views of one sharp edged flake that was knocked off a core. And this picture shows you examples of Lomequian 3.3 million year old stone tools. They're very primitive looking. So at Lamequi, we find cores which have had flakes removed, and these cores were used as tools, say for digging, flakes also used as tools, and the anvils against which these rocks were hit to knock off the flakes. Their presence signals the beginning of the lower Paleolithic cultural period, now lasting from 3.3 million years ago to 300,000 years ago. Now pay attention to this name and uh, divide it up into its parts. Paleo, meaning old, lithic, meaning stone. So Paleolithic means old stone age, which is the topic of today's talk. Don't confuse it with Pleistocene, meaning ice age. Remember, each geological epic name ends in scene. 
So how would you use these early Lamequian stone tools? You could use them to dig up roots. You would use them to cut meat off bones. Remember, we're talking about hominins whose canines are getting smaller. Or you could use them to crack long bones to get at the edible and nutritious marrow inside the bone. So what hominin is associated with Lomequian pounded tools at 3.3 million years ago? Most likely, it's Kenyanthropus, a kind of grassile australopithecine also found in the area at that time. Now, given the small size of australopithecine brains, and given that their hands were still adapted for arboreal climbing, could they have made these tools? Well, Australopithecine brains are larger than modern chimpanzee brains, and modern chimps use stone tools, although they don't make them. We found that even though Australopithecine hands did not have the forceful precision grip that we have today, given that they had extra long fingers and a relatively short thumb, study of the trabecular bone, which is the internal bone structure, indicates that yes, they could and did have the ability to hold and pound rocks to make tools. By 2.6 million years ago, stone tool use became more prevalent in Eastern Africa and the technique changed to what we call flint napping. This stone tool tradition that began by 2.6 million years ago is called the Oldowan tool tradition, and it is still in the lower Paleolithic. So what is flint napping? Well, rocks that form a conchoidal fracture can be flint napped into predictable forms. In flint napping, you shape a rock by holding a rock in each hand and hitting one against the other. The piece that comes off as a result is called a flake. So obviously you want your hammer stone to be harder than your core so that the flake will come off the core, not off the hammer stone. So when you strike the rock, shock waves ripple through and form a cone of percussion. So for example, when a BB hits a plate glass window straight on, a complete cone can form and pop out. Now this is not very useful for making tools, but if you hit on the edge of the rock, you get a partial cone called a flake. A typical flake has characters that identify it as human made. Here you see them labeled. Note how the force of hitting made ripples like water in a pond. And this is what is meant by a conchoidal fracture. A person who makes flake stone tools is a flint napper. The two main methods for removing flakes are percussion, and there are several different kinds of percussion, and pressure flaking. In the Oldowan tool tradition, only percussion was used Pressure flaking was not used until much later in time. The cores used to make Oldowan tools were smaller than those used by Lamequian toolmakers, small enough that you could hold the core in one hand. In percussion flaking, your two hands are separated and you bring the hammer forcefully against the core that you are working. So a hammer stone is used for hard hammer percussion to knock off flakes. And we can recognize them because we can see battering marks and sometimes the finger holds are polished. So a hammer stone is an artifact because it's an object that was used or altered by humans. In pressure flaking, constant contact is kept and you use a fine point such as a deer antler. You exert a lot of pressure to remove a very small flake. Here, the person holds thick leather between the tools and his hand to protect his hand. Makers of Oldowan tools did not use this method. 
A core is a piece of rock from which you knock off at least three flakes. And some tools are made from the core. Some tools are made from the flakes. That is, you take the flake and further flake them into another shape. And some flakes are used unaltered as tools. The earliest stone tools were extremely simple, direct percussion to remove a few flakes. And you use the resort, resultant core tool and you use the flakes. These first tools are called Oldowan pebble choppers. Oldowan because they were first found at Olduvai Gorge. Pebble because they're made from large pebbles. And chopper refers to how they were used. You could use these, for example, to chop into the ground to dig up roots or to chop a long bone to break open and get the marrow. Here is a person holding a pebble chopper or a recreated pebble chopper. Richard Leakey originally named Hobo Habilis Handyman because he thought it was the first hominin to make stone tools. Homo habilis made three simple tool types, one pebble choppers, flakes, and they used hammer stones. And they used the percussion method to make these tools. Here in step one, you can see the hammer stone hitting a core and the flake comes off the opposite side from which you hit. In step two, the person has turned over the core and is now hitting a flake off the opposite side of the edge. And in step three, they're taking off a third flake. So you can see not only do you get flakes, but on the core, you can see flake scars telling you the history of how the tool was made. So a pebble chopper is bifacially flaked. That is, flakes have been removed from both sides of an edge. The older one tool tradition was widespread during the Lower Paleolithic. Although it is first associated with Homo habilis, it continued to be used by Homo erectus. Here are some Homo habilis stone tools from Ethiopia. At Olduvai Gorge, Mary Leakey found 10 clusters of stone, stone tools, and animal bones dating to 1.6 million years ago and associated with Homo habilis. Now the circle of stones are clean on the inside, but outside you find stone tools and animal bones. This could be interpreted in two ways. Mary Leakey thinks that this indicates a living occupation floor of a shelter. So in other words, uh, the clean stones would have helped hold down the edges of a hide covering over a shelter. Or it could have been a cache site where the Homo habilis stored stone tools for processing meat. Now, why would you need that? Well, think about it. It's too dangerous for a Homo habilis to live by the kill. They probably slept in trees or cliffs. And so the hypothesis is that stone tools were carried and stored at this location, and this was a butchering locale used repeatedly. The types of animal bones found indicate seasonal occupation only during the dry season. Eventually, we will link stone tools, eating meat, and brain development. Using stone tools results in more meat in the diet also more manipulation, both of which may contribute to brain development and may be associated with sharing and cooperation. In other words, we're seeing the beginnings of culture. After the simple stone tools of Homo habilis, stone tools become more complex, requiring more skill and a mental template to be able to make them and eventually looking very fancy. The stone tools made by Homo erectus are called Achillean hand axes. And these are also part of the lower Paleolithic cultural period. Achillean hand axes represent a new technology. 
not only they, are they always bifacially made, that is, flaked on both sides of the edge, but they're the first to have a symmetrical shape. Achelian tools have been found mostly west of the Movius line, and to the east, we still find only Oldowan tools. So Homo erectus continued to make Oldowan pebble choppers, flakes, and to use hammer stones. But overall, compared to Homo habilis, Homo erectus had more types of tools. So in addition to Achillean hand axes, for example, they began to make burins, which have a sharp tip for etching lines in things, like bones. And they selected finer raw material to make their symmetrical tools. Over the one million years of Homo erectus, the material culture toolkit remained fairly stable, except that through time, hand axes became more symmetrical, the edge is straighter, and there's a greater number of distinct flake tool forms, such as burins. We divide the Paleolithic into three periods. The lower Paleolithic, meaning the lower Stone Age, from 3.3 million years ago to 300,000 years ago. And this includes the Lomequian, large simple tools, the Oldowan, pebble choppers, and the Achillean, hand axes. The Middle Paleolithic, or Middle Stone Age, from 300,000 years ago to about 35,000 years ago, is significant for beginning to use prepared core technology and flakes. And one example of a tool tradition within this is called Lavawa. And during the Upper Paleolithic, or the Upper Stone Age, from about 35,000 years ago up to the beginnings of agriculture at around 12,000 years ago, we find regional stone industries. <laughs> 